Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to thank you all for stopping by. So in today's video, we are doing more fall. I finally got that fall bug and I was so inspired. I grabbed a bunch of items that I've recently thrifted and we are flipping those for fall. So if you haven't been to my channel before, what you're going to find is a lot of DIY, thrift hauls, thrift flips, really a day in the life of a small business owner. So if that is a channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a video on Mondays and Fridays. And then go ahead, follow me on my other socials. I have been going live over on Facebook every Monday and Wednesday. So I'd love for you to join me. All right, well, I hope you enjoy today's video. For Project One, the inspiration came from my good friend Kristen. Go over to Facebook and follow her. She has some amazing ideas. Once I saw that photo, I knew that I was going to take this bunt pan that I had and definitely give it my own little twist. You guys know how much I love color. I painted it orange. I did two coats of Summer Crush by DIY and I let it dry really well then I went back and I wet distressed it and this is one of my favorite ways to distress an item just because uh, it does not create a lot of dust and you can distress it in all the areas that you want and honestly this color summer crush has become one of my favorite fall colors i definitely plan on breaking that color out to do a lot more fall inspired projects so now that i'm done wet distressing it i'm going to let this dry and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to use big top and we're going to completely seal the bunt pan Anytime you're using DIY paint, it can be reactivated. And this is a great way to blend colors um, by being able to reactivate it with water. But because of that, you do want to seal it. So with any type of top coat that you'd like, um, give it a good coat over the entire piece, let it dry really well, and then we can come back and decorate it. What I love about being inspired by somebody else is you can take inspiration from what they've done and then put your own twist to it and create something just completely unique and different as well. So I, Kristen, uh, I love her style. She uh, loves a lot of neutrals and um, I use a lot of color. So right away, I knew that I was going to use this orange. So to create that twisty type of look, I was trying to figure out how she did that. Well, I had this wire um, from this corded wire that I had picked up at the Dollar Tree last year. And I thought this would be perfect to try to recreate that look. I The one thing that I did not like about this cording is when you cut it, it starts unraveling. So my solution to that was I was going to use a little bit of hot glue on the end and I was going to just kind of seal it and hold it in place. And it seems like it has worked. Um, but when I tried to use it last year, I noticed that it started unraveling once you cut it. So if you guys have a good solution for this uh, wired cord let me know um, to prevent it from unraveling so I don't use hot glue a lot but I broke out my hot glue gun and once I figured out where I wanted to place my ribbon and place this cording I started hot gluing uh, it all into place So the ribbon that I used was actually just a scrap piece of green ribbon that I had. And then I took that corded wiring and I just wrapped that around the center three times to tie that all in. So I started by hot gluing that first chunk of corded wire down 
And then what I did is I tried to fix it so that it, it started off bigger on the bottom and then went a little bit smaller to the top. And I wanted to hide that first kind of cord that I had. And I'm like, I think I started a little bit big, uh, but that was okay. So I just put more hot glue down. I actually glued the back place the ribbon and then I kind of glued that whole ribbon into place to really secure it. I just know that sometimes hot glue lets loose and that's why I don't use it a lot, but I think this worked out perfect. I then took the extra cording and I made one more um, kind of curly cue for the other side and then placed that as well. And uh, Thank you, Kristen, for the inspiration because I absolutely love how this turned out. For project two, I grabbed this galvanized bucket. It's just an old bucket and I grabbed it when I was up in Eagle River a couple weeks ago and I only paid $3 for it, but right away when I saw it, I knew exactly what I was gonna do with this. So I have this set of stamps from IOD and I only have a limited supply left uh, because this was a, uh, a set of stamps that was offered last fall, they still had them available and I bought a bunch and they have been selling like hotcakes, which I can definitely understand because there is so much fall inspiration. Unfortunately, I tried to buy or purchase more to put out on my website and they are completely gone. So once my supply of stamps are gone, they will be, um, you can possibly find them from a different retailer but this set of stamps is something you guys want to grab so what I did is I took the large uh, pumpkin I inked it up with the IOD black ink which is permanent and what I'm going to do is put it stamp that on the bucket so I've done this technique before where you stamp the actual image on then I'm going to go back after it dries and we are going to paint it and then we're going to let that dry and then re-stamp the image and I absolutely love doing this because it looks like you hand painted this yourself so here I've stamped it on the actual bucket bucket. We're going to let that dry and then I'm going to show you how I paint it. So now that the IOD ink is dry, I am going to start off with Prairie Gray and I'm going to paint the stem and I just roughly paint it. It does not have to be perfect at all. Even if it goes outside the lines a little bit, it's okay because once it dries, we're going to go back. We're going to, well, first of all, seal it, and then we're going to re-stamp the image, and it's going to look like you created this beautiful masterpiece. So once I get the stem painted, then I'm going to break out my new favorite color, Summer Crush. We're going to paint the entire piece the Summer Crush color, and then I'm going to go back and I am going to blend in some fire starter. So the two different oranges that uh, you can find from DIY. Now, all the supplies in today's video you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to just, like I said, bring in the summer crush and then bring in fire starter and then blend the two and i love how thick diy's paint is so you can actually add a lot of texture to your image as well 
And now that it's dry, we're taking Big Top and we are going to apply one even coat to the entire pumpkin and then we are going to let it dry. Now that it's dry, we're going to go back and we are going to re-stamp that image onto the pumpkin. So I'm breaking out the IOD black ink, re-inking the entire stamp, and then just realigning the stamp onto that pumpkin, and then just place the stamp down and what I recommend doing is just always making sure that you rub very thoroughly over the entire image. You just want to make sure you can get as much of the ink onto the image. And so I just rub it all over and I hold in the center so that the stamp does not move. I absolutely love how this looks like you hand painted this. For project three, on one of my last videos, I made a bunch of signs. And some of the suggestions were actually quite a few people said to use the other end of the picket uh, with that top being the arrow. So that's what we're doing here today. We are going to make a sign for um, my pumpkin patch and we are painting it summer crush by DIY we are just doing a like kind of like a light um, brush stroke on this because I'm going to let this dry sand it and then we're going to come back and we are going to clear coat it with big top to seal it and then after that we are going to come back and we are going to hand stamp pumpkins so now that it's dry, we're gonna use one of my favorite set of stamps called typesetting, and we're laying out exactly how we want, or where we want to stamp the word pumpkins. And I just make sure all the spacing is looking good. I pick it up and I just use my hand to pick up the stamps and then I just flip it right over so that I know exactly where I want to stamp that. Come back with the IOD black ink. Um, I just apply a really nice even layer to all the stamps and then pick it back up and stamp the sign. And it's really as simple as that. Um, and I love how easy this is. One of the comments that I recently read was, wow, this is so much easier than stenciling. Yeah, and you, get, you can do so many different things with this set of stamps. Um, but again, once you lay your set of stamps down or you lay your um, saying down, just make sure you rub over each of the letters very thoroughly to get as much of that black ink onto the sign. So after that, then what we're going to do is we're just going to stamp the P for pumpkins and your sign is done. I love how this turned out and I'm definitely making more of these. For project four, we are using this table leaf and I recently was given this beautiful vintage table and chair set. Unfortunately, one of the leaves had um, no edges. It looked like it, I don't know if they broke off. Um, so I'm using this extra leaf and what we're gonna do here is we are gonna paint it old 57. Prior to painting it, this leaf did have these little knobs sticking out, so I just took my jigsaw, cut those off flush, 
and we are going to create this leaf into a beautiful fall sign. So I did apply two coats of the DIYs Old 57, let it dry very thoroughly, and then we're going to come back and we're sealing it. So I am using Big Top again to seal the whole piece. And after I did this, I realized that because I was going to decoupage uh, some items on here, I really didn't have to seal it with the Big Top. So it was kind of an extra step that I did that did not have to happen. Uh, initially, I was going to do something a little different with this, and then once I decided to do the decoupaging, I realized this was an added step. So I am using Roy Cycles uh, paper called Pumpkins, and I absolutely love this. So I used it in one of my last videos and I was inspired because I saw quite a few other uh, retailers kind of stacking these and each of them did it a little different. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a really cool and unique idea. So um, if you haven't gone out there yet, Roy Cycle does have like a page where there's a ton of inspiration and definitely go check that page out on Facebook as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my scissors, I'm just rough cutting all of these pumpkins out. I cut out a few leaves um, and then I also cut out some of the smaller pumpkins. So once I get them all cut out, then we're ready to go ahead and apply those onto that leaf. And when I mentioned before that I did not need to apply the big top, it's because I'm using liquid patina to apply the um, decoupage paper. And liquid patina is actually a sealer as well as it allows you to use it uh, for decoupage. So now I have my pieces laid out on the board how I want them and see how I'm going to stack them like this. And I thought about using a little leaf there. I'm going to cut out a few other um, items as well. So what I'm doing is using, like I said, the liquid patina from DIY and I am going to start uh, on the top pumpkin and I'm going to just start on the bottom of it. So I'm working my way up uh, with that pumpkin piece. And I lay it down and I'm just going to use my brush to smooth it all out and then start working my way up to completely decoupage that pumpkin into place. And I just work out all the wrinkles um, with my paint or with the brush and more liquid patina and again, just working my way up. And I'm loving how this is turning out so far, and I don't even have a pumpkin on. And I just keep on doing that for each of the pumpkins. Now I got the first one down, I am going to then just apply that leaf and then start with the next pumpkin. So here I start, I line it all up, and I just start working my way down and uh, this is just such an easy project. These papers from Roy Cycled are absolutely gorgeous. I love how as I'm going through all the papers and playing around with them, I just keep finding more and more of my favorites. Uh, the artists behind all of these beautiful images are so extremely talented. And it makes projects like this so easy when you have such beautiful papers to work with. So for my final step to the sign, I am using Farmhand from IOD. I love this font because it's very narrow and tall. And we're just going to stamp on here, Welcome Fall. And I do the exact same thing as I had did in the other projects. I lay out all my lettering so I know exactly where I want to stamp, pick it up, uh, ink it and then lay it down. It's really as simple as that. And I love how this whole sign turned out. I couldn't be...
for my fifth and final project, I wanted to make like a faux book stack and I had these two by fours lying around and what I'm going to do is paint one white, one summer crush and one old 57. While I'm creating, I try to pick colors that are all going to go together. That way, when I take these items and put them in my booth, it is ready for a booth display. So I've used a lot of the Orange Crush, I have, or Summer Crush. I've also used the Old 57, um, and then the white just ties it all in. Now, from here, we're going to use a letterpress, and I love this font set because you get three different fonts, three different sizes, uh, and I'm just going to stamp the edges of these 2 by 4s and really make them look like book stacks. Afterwards, I thought maybe I could have shabbied them up a bit or did something uh, like that. I absolutely love though how these turned out. Um, after I'm done stamping them, I am going to seal them with Big Top like I did with all the other projects, and then we're gonna decorate them up. So with my book stacks, I love taking twine and wrapping it around. I pick up the twine at like Hobby Lobby or Walmart, just wrap it around quite a few times, give it a good tie. And then I like to attach like a type of ribbon or greenery. Uh, with this one, I want to keep it pretty simple. And I just had some scraps of drop cloth and I took the scraps, I cut them up a bit, and I'm adding just two pieces of drop cloth to it and just tying it randomly and I love the way these turned out. So what were your thoughts? What was your favorite project? Honestly, I couldn't pick a favorite today. I loved them all. I want to thank Kristen for the inspiration for the bunt pan. Uh, she is part of my membership group. And honestly, folks, they all tell me that I inspire them. Well, they inspire me just as much. So I will be opening up my membership group um, I was going to do it in August. I plan on doing it after Cranberry Fest. So be watching for that. I'm going to put out more information. Uh, they, My members actually said, maybe we should create a waiting list. So I might have something out there for that. But if you're interested, definitely reach out. I will provide you more information. I'll put some stuff in the description below as well. Well, Monday's video, I'm not really sure yet. Um, probably more fall, prepping for Cranberry Fest, something like that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.